The Oklahoma City Thunder all around had an amazing season and they have an amazing bright future. Yes, their season did end tragically a few days ago, but you know what? I'm here to talk about this OKC team because they were way ahead of schedule and I mean way ahead of schedule. Last summer, I made a video talking about this team saying that, you know, they were going to be a playoff team. They were going to be pretty solid. I did not expect them to be the one seed in the Western Conference. That's honestly all around just insane to be one of the youngest teams, if not the youngest team in the NBA to go ahead and be the first seed in the Western Conference. So yeah, I'm here to break down this OKC team. Before I get into it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It's very much appreciated. Follow my Twitter, my Reel, my Instagram, all that crumble takes. Let me know in the comments who your favorite player is on the Oklahoma City Thunder, and let's get straight into it. So to start off, we're going to talk about the season that the Oklahoma City Thunder had. Like I mentioned earlier, they were first in the Western Conference with a record of 57-25. and 25. The whole top of the Western Conference was just an all-around dogfight between them top three spots, and they had the tiebreaker over Denver to go ahead and become the number one seed in the Western conference they had a great season the regular season there was a ton of bright spots from this okc team a ton of great plays and going into the playoffs this team felt confident but the thing is when you're a young team in the nba you know a team that you know is their first time going into the playoffs you really don't have a chance of making it very far due to the fact of experience i fully believe that experience is a huge thing when it comes in to winning championships in the national basketball association so they went ahead and swept the new orleans pelicans in the first round they were missing zion williamson they took care of them it was easy work no one really expected of the Pelicans to really do much without Zion. And then the second round came, they went ahead and played the Dallas Mavericks. Game one, they absolutely obliterated them. Everyone was like, oh, okay, this OKC team's legit. They're beating up Luka and Kyrie, one of the best duos, if not the best duo in the NBA. Then Mavericks win game two, Mavericks win game three, and then OKC takes game four, game five, Dallas takes, and then game six, they went ahead and lose, and the OKC Thunder goes ahead and gets eliminated. Now, this isn't a bad thing whatsoever. Of course, Shy and I guess the Thunder probably really had championship expectations for doing this well or at least western conference finals expectations but this is not a bad thing necessarily because like i said i don't think they were going to win the championship regardless even if they were to get past the dallas mavericks i feel like the timberwolves or nuggets i don't know yet at the time i'm recording this video would have went ahead and beat them but i for sure don't think it's a bad thing all right now let's talk about the players on this team and might as well start off with the mvp runner-up they have in this okc team being sga now last year sga was a great player but i did not expect them to take an mvp MVP level jump and this is another reason why this OKC team was so good he went ahead and averaged 30 points which is all around huge five rebounds and six assists per game on 53.5 percent field goal shooting he was hooping all right and the thing with SGA is his ceiling is pretty much 30 points he'll give you 30 but he ain't going any higher than that that's what you are gonna start realizing if you pretty much see his box score and his stats very rare for him to drop anything above 40 but SGA he's that MVP level player that every championship team has he's gonna go ahead every single night get you 30 points get you that scoring that you need there's a lot of conversations that he's really not that good and he does a lot of foul baiting which he does get a lot of free throws but we also see superstars back in their prime like james harden he went ahead and do that so i'm not gonna even get into the whole free throw debacle that whole thing right now but sga he's a great guy he's the mvp and if his okc team ever does go on a run which i believe that they will he's gonna be the front running guy and he's probably gonna be finals mvp he's a dog and then they got another guy named Jalen williams or j-dub and a lot of people are for some reason talking about he might be better than SGA like going into the future which I think is crazy but J-Dub is a great second option that they have on this team he averaged 19 points on 54% field goal shooting four rebounds four assists you know he's a dog he's also a huge scorer on this team and he contributes in a huge way like that so SGA and J-Dub you know they're like two guards of the team and they contribute scoring wise and those are two guys in the backcourt who are just great to have and then you got a guy like Chet Holmgren who was runner up for rookie of the year this year but of course Wemby went ahead and walked away with that he played all 82 games this year which was huge he averaged 16 points seven rebounds and two assists per game he's also another huge guy on this OKC team who's going to be a stud for the future he's one of my favorite players in the NBA he's going to be a great big man I already know and all I got to say is what a pro wants what a pro needs you for knowing exactly what a pro wants what a pro needs whatever man i've seen that commercial so many times it's absolutely drilled into my head but anyways and of course they got guys like lou door a super underrated defensive piece and one of the best in the league when it comes to defense they got carson wallace who they drafted last year isaiah joe aaron wiggins that might go ahead and resign this offseason that wouldn't be a bad idea then they have josh giddy <laughs> yeah so of course we should all know about all the controversy that josh giddy had this season with you know being a pdf filer i don't even remember if the investigation is still ongoing 
going. I think they're pretty certain that it isn't anymore. But anyways, in the playoffs this year, he averaged eight points, three rebounds, and two assists. Now, that might not seem terrible as a guy who, you know, is known for getting some triple doubles and not scoring that much. But oh my God, in the Dallas Mavericks series, he averaged six points and he was just all around unplayable. There was no reason to have him in the game whatsoever. He went ahead and got Ben or Isaiah Joe. And do I blame Mark for doing this? No, whatsoever. It was honestly a great idea. And it's looking like Josh Giddy is getting moved this offseason. To where exactly? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of odds right now. And you know, bets, a lot of rumors circling around right now. But I guarantee you, Josh Giddy is not on this OKC team next. But I guarantee you, Josh Giddy's not on this OKC team next year. They got a ton of draft picks. They have some moves that they can go ahead and make. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But definitely feel like they can go ahead and find someone to replace Josh. And when it comes to leading this team, they have a head coach named Mark Dagnall. He's a great head coach. He won coach of the year this year. He likes focusing on the young guys, make sure they go ahead and develop. He loves team chemistry, which is such a great thing to have as a head coach. Team chemistry is such a great thing that your team really needs to have when it wants to go ahead and do great things in the NBA. And then of course, he also has a great defensive mind. So when it comes to leading this team, this OKC team has a great head coach. And then when it comes to the guy who built this team, Sam Prezi, yeah, he has 37 draft picks in the next seven draft, including 14 first round picks in 20 seconds round picks. Now, a lot of people debate on what the Thunder should do with these draft picks, if they should go ahead and trade for a superstar guy that want to go ahead and get moved, or if they should go ahead and, you know, do some little thing, make little trades, maybe select some players with these picks. But I don't think the Thunder are going to go ahead and use all 37 picks on players because, like, you don't have enough room on your roster for all that. So I definitely think the Thunder are going to be making some moves from a superstar. Hey, man, I don't know if they're going to go ahead and trade for a superstar because I feel like that's just a bad idea and that could cause chemistry issues. But I definitely think they should maybe go ahead and trade for an all-star guy. I hear the talk about you know Demar Rosen potentially being there even though they can't trade for him he's probably going to be a free agent still a guy like that I could see ended up in an OKC just an all-star level player and of course this team you know they play at a high level they play at a high fast paced offense they have some great defensive strategies since they're such a young team they can play at such a great young level and it's just such an elite thing and of course this team has some great chemistry you can say that you can see that J-Dub and SGA really complement each other they're two great in the backcourt they're two great players in the back court i believe that chet's eventually gonna go ahead and get another player to help him out in the front court and that front court's gonna be dominant and like i mentioned earlier they got 37 draft picks they have a ton of picks they can go ahead and select a ton of players or go ahead and trade for some people and that's why i think the long-term vision of this team is just gonna you know go ahead and get that playoff experience bring some new guys in some fresh guys and maybe some more experienced guys since the team is one of the youngest teams in the nba maybe you want to go ahead and bring in some veterans who have that playoff experience in those high pressure situations so you can go ahead and play as a better team in like a game six with you know two minutes left versus dallas but as the years just keep going on and keep going on this team is just going to get more experience they're going to be more consistent and as long as everyone stays healthy they're going to be a great team i fully believe this okc team can win multiple championships as everything falls into the right spot they got the draft picks they got the players they got the head coach they got the gm they have literally everything you need when it comes to being a championship caliber team only thing they needed this year was some more experience they weren't going to go ahead be first in the west their first time and go ahead and run through the west win the chip that wasn't gonna happen as such a young team and a lot of people knew that including myself so as the years just keep going on and keep going on they're just gonna gain more experience and they're just gonna continue to be a better team so guys do not be surprised whatsoever for the okc thunder go ahead and win a chip in the next coming years because they got a great team they got a great front office they truly know what they're doing and they have an insane bright future if you enjoyed the video guys please drop a like and subscribe it's very much appreciated comment how many years you think it's gonna take for this okc thunder team to go ahead and win a championship me personally, I think it's going to be coming very, very soon, and I will see you guys in the next video.